Hello everyone, this is Showtime 112. In January 1967, the North Vietnamese Air Force suffered its highest loss of the war. Under the leadership of the famous Robert Olds, US Air Force Phantoms shot down at least five of their precious MiG-21s. This caused the Vietnamese to lay low for a while and reconsider their tactics. Realizing that a direct confrontation with American fighters wasn't the best option, they focused on the advantages of their most advanced fighter, small size and high speed. The MiG-21s would initially fly at low level and position themselves behind American bomber formations while climbing above them. Then, they would make supersonic diving passes, focusing on trailing or isolated aircraft. Improved skills of the ground controllers would also contribute to the effectiveness of this approach. August 23, 1967 demonstrated the effect of this new tactics. A strike package of 40 airplanes was launched by the US Air Force against the Yen Bien railway yard. This consisted of five flights of F-105s and four flights of F-4D Phantoms. As the two types rendezvoused in the air refueling zone, they proceeded into North Vietnam with the Iron Hand F-105 flight leading the force to the target area. The strike force continued with the rest of the F-105s, followed by F-4s. The North Vietnamese radars detected a formation while it was still in Laos. MiG-17s and MiG-21s were scrambled to meet the intruders. Some of the MiG-17 pilots were North Koreans, and they took off from Kep Air Base at 2.56 pm. A few minutes later, two MiG-21s took off from Noi Bai. They were flown by Wen Nat Kyu as the leader and Wen Van Kok as the wingman. Van Kok would eventually become the leading ace of the entire conflict with nine kills to his credit. Of those, two were unmanned drones and three F-105 kills were not confirmed by American records. At this point, he had only shot down one F-105 in April 1967. The leader, Kyu, would also become an ace with six victories officially credited to him. Two of these victories were not confirmed by American sources. The two Vietnamese pilots flew west, initially at low altitude. Then, they climbed to 6,000 meters while maneuvering into a position to attack. Kyo detected the American formation about 15 kilometers away. He selected one of the F-4s and engaged with his missile. The American Ford flight was at 15,000 feet, about 50 miles northwest of Hanoi. There was a warning on the radio, bandits, northwest at 60 miles, heading 360. The two MiGs descended out of a 25,000 feet overcast and the air crew of number 2 F-4 could only watch as a missile launched by two past their left wing and hit the leader. The pilot, Major Charles Robert Tyler, was taken prisoner while his weapon system officer, Captain Ronald Sittner, died. 
Kyo and Kok then engage another phantom. In Kok's own words, his mech was damaged by friendly fire during this attack. As Kyo briefly disappeared in the clouds, Kok launched his own missile at the phantom but came into his leader's line of fire as he dived from above. Cox's missile hit the Phantom, but at a very close range, which also damaged his MiG-21. Wing Vat Cox was then ordered to return to base, with his airplane being controllable, but unable to fly faster than 600 km per hour. His victim was an F-4D flown by Captain Larry Kerrigan, with Lt. Charles Lane as the weapon system officer. Just like in the first case, the pilot was captured while the weapon system officer died. Both Phantoms belonged to the 555th Tactical Fighter Squadron known as Triple Nickel. At this point, a confused dogfight developed as the MiG-17s and other 21s joined the fight. Wing Matthew was covering his wingman as he pulled out of the fight, but then he spotted another F4D. He launched his remaining R3S missile at it and scored a hit. This aircraft was flown by Major Robert Sawhill and Lt. Gerald Lee Gernt. They both ejected and were captured. American sources attribute the loss of this aircraft to intense AAA over the target. A fourth Phantom was also lost in this attack. He was damaged by the anti-aircraft fire, but the air crew, Major Demock and Lieutenant Pyatt managed to reach Thailand, but they ran out of fuel before reaching a tanker. They ejected safely. Those two Phantoms belonged to the Triple Nickel Squadron as well. On the same day, US Air Force lost an F-105, plus an O-1E forward controller aircraft in unrelated incidents, both of them to ground fire. This day became known as Black Wednesday among the pilots who participated in the attacks. The only bright spot for the Americans was a kill by an F-105, whose pilot, Lt. Dave Waldrop, shot down a MiG-17.
This was witnessed by Robin Olds flying fighter cover for the strikers. After returning to Thailand, Olds found out that the intelligence had been aware of MiG's new tactics. Before implementing them, they had practiced on a few strike packages without engaging. Air Force intelligence thought that this information was too sensitive and classified, and they never informed Olds about it. He was furious and almost engaged in a physical fight with the intelligence officer who informed him of that. I have to say that the airplane types used in this reenactment are not 100% historically accurate. F4Ds are represented by the E model. MiG-21 PFL is represented by the BIS, while MiG-15s are standing in for the 17s. The reason for this is that those are the only types available in DCS world which we use as the platform. I also want to thank my buddy Walter who helped me with this reenactment. Some of the scenes would have been very hard to do without the help of a human pilot. You can join our Discord server just like him. Be sure to press the like button. Become a Patreon supporter to ensure the future of the channel and keep watching Showtime 112.